We mentioned in the open, Peter, only 13 active fighters tonight for Boston. A lot of guys are being tasked with theoretically fighting two fights tonight. Yeah, which is you Towns coming in bombing, throwing big shots, walking Valentin down a little bit. Maybe oversized. This guy who looks like a natural, almost a 140. Now that's in, in any city, any team in TCL, and you see a lot of guys fighting heavier than usual. This is, in, in quotes, their off-season. That's another key addition to this Philadelphia smoke roster, which we'll talk about later. But for now, he has his hands folded, Rasheem Brown. To the building in TCL. Ooh. Yeah, they always bred Ooh. a certain level of fighter out of Philly. Absolutely. Fountain hanging, though. He is. He's right there. A little slip in. Junior, right? That's I correct. Junior. A little legend. Look at Valance. Done well thus far in TCL, and Sims is 6-0. and This is one of those spots where Philly probably figures it's going to get the point and maybe more. She's overmatched. She makes it rough. Mm -hmm. She gets in there, throws the opponent off, and tries to mug him a little bit. It's not pretty, but... So we haven't heard the official announcement, but it looks like if you look at your screen that the smoke have the 10, which would indicate that... They come forward a little bit, like I'd seen her do in the past. And there is the official announcement from ring announcer Pat Sullivan. So the Smoke have the early 10-9 lead, trying to add to it here with Brittany Sims against Leash Pike. And Pike was one of those mid-season acquisitions for the Butchers. Melanie Costa suffered a cut in her first. Pike's nose bloodied. Sims now has her back into the corner here with still 90 seconds to go in this round. Leash is tough. She's right there with Sims, 33 years old, she's promoted by Marshall Kaufman, who runs a lot of events in that Philly, New Jersey area. She's 6 and 3 as a Pike, a bloody mess here in the second round. And Sims is just letting her hands go. Final 30 seconds, and they're going to wave it off. Wow. Big fights in his on his resume. Tevin Farmer, William Foster III fought Roly Romero. So Elijah's catching and here's Elijah. right hand. And he's coming right in. He knows he's in a fight, so he's putting it right on him. He's not going to waste any time. And this is one that the Butchers need. Nice. they got to get something back, but Sparrow now responds with a couple of shots Double of his own. Up to the body. <clears throat> They still got the names. They resurgence for Avery Sparrow. Lodge is doing better when he's yeah. coming forward. He's getting caught though when he's laying back. <laughs> he's going to lay back and get caught with that left hook. Both guys coming to trade. Keep him on the ropes. And even though it's early, Peter, there's a little sense of urgency. If you stop it right there, sure. Nope, he just got caught with that hook. Well, the very tough veteran battle test that Avery Sparrow has his. This could be a big one for Boston if they get this one back. Well, I just got the momentum, but I'd like to see him keep those hands up in those exchanges so we don't get caught with that left hook. Pacho hasn't won yet. He's had a couple of tough luck losses, 0-2 on the season. So you know he wants to get one and really get his team back in position. That, that don't really look that bad, but no. it could take you out of your game. And it could be enough to set up a big KO punch. And we'll see if it's enough here before the final bell. Big final 30 seconds for both guys. Well, there hasn't been a lull in this round at all. No, it nonstop. <laughs> nice Sparrow head looks a little there. stronger. Looks hmm. like he got something left that he's holding back on. But Elijah's pushing the pace. Bodies you see right there. Yeah, that's close. Oh, well, great action in the third round. I give that one. And we'll see what he has left in the tank at 43 years old later on tonight. But right. it has something in store for the final minute. Yeah, now he's not getting a little distracted talking in there. That's when mm. things can oh, get dangerous. And there it is. Oh, it. Johnson double left hook. And they're not calling that a knockdown. So tough break for Johnson. Maybe a, that's what caught Renan during that exchange where he hit like another left hand there. That was a hard shot. I think if there was any. The last minute he turned it up, yeah. 10 seconds to go. He'd probably open him up now. Mm. Renan's doing a good job. The record, you can see the trends and how fighters have performed. Mm. You, Moreau's applying the pressure here against Moreau. Go for a knockdown or a knockout. Yeah, <laughs> she heard it with that shot. Nonetheless, Moore is going for it. She's got Moreau in some trouble. He's holding it. Surprised the judge ain't calling the hole. 
Referee's breaking oh, them up, go. but they're going to let it continue. Moore's got 90 seconds, a lot of time here, Peter. Protect yourself. It's really a momentum killer. So here comes Moore again. Now she knows there's a minute left. She's going to let her hands go for sure. Favor, because clearly she's won this round. Knockout, six foot one righty against mm. Speedy Rashidi Ellis, who is undefeated in TCL. Yep. And these mm. two are expected to go at it twice tonight. Yep. It's good. Ellis Rashidi's dancing. already catching him. Yeah, he's loving it. Let him with the right hand, left hook twice. He's right on him. Ellis is having some fun. Yeah, he's he dancing. Is. He's letting the tongue fly. They needed him. Yeah, he's great. Oh, another right great hand. Team captain, composed. Rashidi Ellis's resume. He's twenty four and one as a pro. In most cases, your man. It's going to raise his stock to go up there with a kid like Rashidi, especially if he makes it to the, to the end of the round without getting Ooh. stopped. The leg shook a little bit. He was looking to the ref to maybe <laughs> take a look at it. Nice Ellis job. having fun dancing. Nice. Perhaps the, the format's better for Sumter. I think it is. TV and get your brawl pass. But with that said, the Butchers would love to steal a couple more here at the end and get this thing a lot closer than it looked like early on. He's leaning away. He's not making it easy for something, that's for sure. First time. Last year, he was 7 and one advantage. You know, my father hung out with guys like that, that. They had the knockout there with Brittany Sims over Leash Pike. And it looked like they may run away with this thing. But as we've seen in the past, the momentum in TCL shifts so quickly. Yeah. I think if, if Lacey could... Duweko again, burrowing his way in. That's not going to be a knockdown. That's a slip. There's the final bell. I think Skyler went away with that one. And if that's Good the job, case, Duweko. 76-74 in favor of the smoke. And Looks like Valentin's starting off with that high guard. Still coming in. Yeah. Dean Brown, so he's looking to get one back. But Telez is very tough. Telez making his season debut for the Philadelphia smoke. And he comes. I can't say enough about these kids that come Ooh. in. They're giving up weight. Yeah. Coming into the fight. Mountain. But an opportunity for the smoke to try to get back in this and stem some of the tide from the launch rounds. Again, Boston on that four round win streak. They climb right back into this, but Telez now bringing the, the pressure to Valentin. You see Duaco on the sideline there. There was a little extracurricular activity going on. He's doing all he can do with that high guard. Stay in it. Now Valentin trying to work the body and come back upstairs. Seconds here. The first of our eight middle rounds. And so far it's been mostly Telez. This year for TCL taking on Jacqueline McTamney. He's shelling it back in a way. He's getting right in her face. Been waiting. Yeah, you hate to see these kids getting injured. You know, you got to wonder, are there any teams out there that are... Very close round. Yep. This depends on how the judges score it. Nice right hand there by Vincent. Philly building its lead back up. It's now 96-92. I think the heavyweight's still ringside. He's scaring all the referees. Aubrey, who we saw earlier. Yeah, they can fight. The talented kids. Now, Paulino comes in at 3-1 and one this season. Albright... Worth mentioning that Albright as a pro is 16-2, and two, seven wins by knockout. And one of his two losses. But Albright comes to fight, he's tough. The Philly guy, and they always have that reputation of being tough. But Paulino, so far, been very aggressive. This is one that Boston really needs and wants. They don't want this to continue to spiral. They're already mm -hmm. down four tonight. And you really have to start to reassess at that point. Now, Paulino's putting them together nice. Nothing really stands out, although right there with Albright, he's setting that right hand up nice. One minute to go here. He's a big shot by Polino. Just missed. Michael Parenti and Peter Welch bringing you the action mm, with our go. ringside correspondent, Ron Borges. And we're in the middle of another banger right here between Paulino and Albright. And Albright hits the canvas. Paulino with a big knockdown. Peter between a 10-7 or a 10-8. He's gone. 
Let's see if Paulino can close out this round. This would really get Boston back into it. Come on. Put them together, baby. Albright stunned. You know he's hurt. Paulino trying to lay it on the line here and get the stoppage. Ten get seconds there, to go. Arthur McCanty keeping a close eye on it. Take a look at the replay here, Peter. I like how Polino, he's consistent with every fight that he's fought in this. He gets his punches off, he slides over to the right, and catches his guys clean. He does it consistently. Luna looks aggressive. Oh, yeah. Find oh, oh Luna with a knockdown. Hand. That is huge for the Butchers. <laughs> and that's going to be at least another 10-8. I think he's all right. I don't think he's hurt. Looks like he, he should be able to finish him. it out. He dropped him big time. That's back-to-back -back rounds with knockdowns for the Butchers. And by all accounts, that's going to even the score unless Luna can get the knockout. So the tide is beginning to turn for the Butchers here in Boston. Stay relaxed. You know he wants to finish this one out in style. Another big left hand by Luna. And there's the bell. So another big round for the Boston on Shamara Woods. Mm, hip banger. These two coming to fight. Shamara Woods looking to get back in the W column as well. She's 2-4 and four overall this season. And now this is an example of a fighter where the platform has not been kind to her. Woods is 7-0 and oh as a pro. She's had a great start to her professional career, but TCL's been a little bit of a hiccup for her mm. for whatever reason. And it could be a lot of things, but it's really hard mm. to always say. But here comes Coleman. Well, Stevie's got it. Coleman trying to keep the momentum going for the Butchers, who scored 10-8 rounds in each of the last two. Coleman. It's good. She's backing her up. It's good. Keep that. I think Wood hit her with her best. Didn't move her, and that <laughs> got it. Starting to get to the stretch run here of the middle rounds. To manage it and stop walking her down, take those shots away. She just ate one there, but she's coming forward. And we'll see if uh, if Coleman's done enough to impress the judges. That's what I was just going to say. It makes a huge impression yeah. on the judges when she walks down and she's landing shots like that. Any minute now, see where this matchup Ooh, stands. What we shots. do, that's a little bit, yeah, that's a good body shot there by uh, Rodriguez. This kid's winging. <laughs> but what we do know is Boston's won the last three rounds in the middle portion. Keep pressing. Don't let him set up. Rodriguez is tough, very fast hands on the board and right. stems some of that tide that the smoke felt they had going in their favor. <clears throat> Trying to do the same and now keep momentum. They're about to see the season debut of Elvin Ayala, former world title challenger from New Haven, Connecticut. That's going to be very interesting. Yeah, looking forward to that too. But right now it's Elijah Pacho and Francisco Rodriguez, round number 15. One more to go. Mm. Putting something on those shots. Yeah, he's starting to land cleanly mm -hmm. now. Get in there. Close on. Clinch. Yeah. Pacho really needs to clinch, as you said. Hang on here and don't take an unexpected or unnecessary mm -hmm. knockdown or knockout. He's right. You come in with that killer instinct. Another big mm -hmm. right hand. Pacho's a little bit wobbly. Jackie's going to let him go. Good job. The clock. Tough, tough competitor. You got to wonder what Ayala has left in the tank. A last minute addition here with a couple of those light heavyweights and active for the butchers. They needed some bodies, and so Ayala up to the task. <clears throat> we never know how long a guy's been in the gym for, if he's been in the gym at all. The fighters always think they got one more left when he's stepping up. 2011-2012 era. Ayala's the guy that has some big fights against Arthur Abraham, Curtis Stevens. Been in there with some of the best in his weight class during the prime of his career. I don't know if he's having trouble with his shoes. Yeah, his footing just looks off. With the, yeah. with the feet. The footwork looks very awkward. Something's going on.
kind of looks like he's on trouble with his shoes. Yeah, his footing just looks going off. On with the, yeah, with the feet. The footwork looks very awkward. Something's going on. Kind of looks like he's on ice skates. And Robinson really hasn't landed. Clearly enough, there's a big right hand though, just as I mentioned by Robinson. And now Ayala is in some trouble. <laughs> and this is not what. And this is one of those matchups on paper where the smoke feel they could maybe climb back into it, down two points. Oh, he got one. Might be matchup. Robinson just three and four this year, so he's looking to get a big W here for his team and stem some of that tide. Ayala ain't lying down. He's still no. throwing. He looks very awkward, but he's hanging in there. There's something with the shoes is sliding out. Robinson now has Ayala in a corner. 35 seconds to go in the round. Big left hand there by Robinson. You know he's looking for the... Robinson lands two more big shots. Big shot. Ayala stuck in a quick left hook. <laughs> using the ropes to throw his punches. That's an old veteran right there. Yes, it sure is. Ten seconds. Ray Robinson's been in complete See control. Yeah. Something's not right with Ayala's footing. But the bell rings and Ayala survives. So you know Lacey has redemption on his mind. Mm -hmm. He won the first round, or his first fight, I should say, tonight. This one even on the scorecard. Big right hand that time, though, by Lacey. Nate is going to keep applying that pressure. Look to load up. You can land that uppercut, finish with the left hook. You can back Nathan off a little bit. Nathan four. They favored the Philly Smoke and the decisions. You know, if they're more favorable, the style. The punches are going to win the fight. I think he's got his redemption here, Mike. What do you think? I think these final 30 seconds have possibly been the difference maker for Lacey. And a couple of right Jackie's hands. going to let him go. Jackie will let him go. You know Lacey wanted this one badly as he ducks through the ropes. In the ring, out of the ring. Referee loses control here. Lacey can't even get back into the ring, but the bell does ring here. And so that's the end of that round. Lacey halfway out of the ring in the end. the butchers really need it's a great way to start the action for the money round absolutely put one of your best fighters out there and really three of your best in first time she needs to get this point this and could even things up but here comes more yeah, there goes more she really knows how to control that distance more does the butcher is five and oh already trying to make it six and oh and trying to get two big wins over Shariya Moreau Get that stoppage now. This next one on deck here between Francisco Rodriguez and Alejandro Polino could be a showstopper, but before we get to that, we still have 30 seconds or so between Amelia Moore and Shariah Moreau. And you start to play that matchup game down the stretch. You look at some of the names on paper if you're. And it might not be in the cards, but in any event here, she's done enough she in my estimation win. to get the round. We have a dead even score. With Hard six to fights up. to go, yeah. Trying to keep up with the fights and the score. <laughs> it's like we're playing two games at once. Step over and sneak that right hand in. On the inside. Get... So 30 seconds to go here. We got a little bit of an explanation on the scoring, Peter. Apparently they reversed the 10-7 that Brittany Sims had over Leash Pike in the first match of the night. That's now been scored at 10-9, and that's why we are where we are with the score. But in any event, Pike could not continue because she broke her nose. So instead of 10-7, it was 10-9. They announced that they, could, they should not have stopped that fight. It's very interesting scoring, so it kind of threw off the scoring Ooh, all night. And now Polino, Polino with a big disappoints. knockdown. That's a true test for Polino to drop this kid, Rodriguez. Oh, what a huge knockdown for Polino. Just what the butchers needed in a dead heat with only six fights to go. They're going to get a 10-8 round. And there's the bell. So right at the bell, as we said, you want to stack up your wins three in a row with your three best fights. Get the W. Get a little bit of a cushion with four rounds to go. It's going to make it very mm. uphill battle for Philly. 
double with that right hand. Against Ayala, is Hart going for broke trying to get a stoppage, seeing what he saw the first time from Ayala? It's a tough call, man. Yeah. You may have to abandon what you think is a good game plan to get what you need at that moment, or at least try to. And Rashidi's picking up where he left mm -hmm. off the last round. Hellas has had Albright's number. Looking smooth. Launch rounds, rather. It doesn't affect the fighter, but it affects the score. Absolutely. You're right, because Alicia Pike still has a broken nose regardless. Right. <laughs> Shidi's hitting Albright with a shot of punches. He's got control. Yeah. It's looking mm. very good for Ellis. Bad shots he's taken. Mm. I didn't think Ayala looked good at all. I thought he was on, on thin ice the first time, and, and maybe it was the shoes, maybe not he, the shoes. He did land a couple of decent yeah. shots, but his feet went under him, so I'm wondering if the shoes now are going to make a difference yeah, for him. Yeah, he, he still looks a little awkward, but he's landing a little bit better here against Ray Robinson. This is a big opportunity. The Philly smoke, probably 140 to go. It's probably something we don't know and what led into what led to that decision. But Robinson's starting to open things up a little bit against Ayala. Nice left hand there by Robinson. Just under a minute to go, a lot of time. Ayala's doing his coaches are urging him on, Ayala, to keep coming forward. Maybe just clinch if they can. Another hard shot there by Robinson. Ayala's taking a bit of a beating here in these final seconds, but it looks like he's going to do just enough to hang in and stay on his feet. Shamara Woods, and Woods bloodied Coleman in that first time, but Coleman just had the better round, and she got the win, deservedly so, on the scorecard. If you're Woods, you want to come out and bring that pressure that at least lets you draw blood the first time, yeah, and maybe Woods, a little bit more. Woods starts off hard, <laughs> yeah. fast. But she faded a little bit, just enough for Stevie Jane to slip in there and impose her. And for the butchers of Coleman. And it's been very close. A lot of time left in this round. Be very interesting to see how the rest of this plays out. Nice little left hand snuck in there by Woods, but a big left followed up by Coleman. Keep walking, keep walking. There you go. That's it. She caught it with that right hand cold. Woods has definitely been more aggressive second time around. Yes, yeah, she has. <laughs> I love the camaraderie. I love seeing the teammates yeah, in the corner. Yeah, Carino's urging her on to walk it down. Team Combat League TV. Nice oh, right hand right by here. Coleman. That's the difference right there. That's it. Yeah, Woods fights keep back. Keep punching and yeah. keep landing. And now here comes Shamara Woods. Woods came right back. Yeah. Too close to call, Mike. This is a tough one here. This is really going to be on the judges. However they score this one could really go a long way in determining who wins outright in the end. Yeah. That was a big momentum swing during those right. those middle rounds for the Butchers. It's like a stalemate. Nobody's really... To separate themselves from the pack in these final 30 seconds... And they closed the show for Philly, so perhaps this was a strategic move on the part of the smoke to put one of their veterans at the end of the fight. But he's going to need a knockdown to get a draw and a knockout to get the win for Philly. He's a big puncher. He's strong. He'll tie him up and walk into something big. Hart really trying to let his hands go. He knows what the smoke need. You know, the mistake something uh, Hart's making is he's walking in mm. with his chin up in the air safe when you know what you need to do. But look at how he's lumbering in like Frankenstein. Yeah. <laughs> right? Really Hart's wheelhouse is, if you will. But he is unloading on Sumter. Sumter doing a good job covering up for the most part. I think Sumter could catch him. I agree. He could catch Hart charging in, trying to get a knockdown or a knockout. I'd have to launch one or two off his chin. Ooh. Right there. Here we go. There man. it is. You heard him. You got him. Thank <laughs> you.